All right. So today I'm going to go over one of my favorite Python tools of all time, a uh, utility called IPython. You've probably come across it in one way or another if you've been working with Python. It's the same underlying code that powers Jupyter Notebooks. Um, IPython is just the CLI version that lets you do interactive stuff from the CLI. So if you don't have it yet, it's just one pip install IPython away. So go ahead and run that and you will soon have it. Um, I have already have it installed, so I'm just going to fire it up. So IPython is basically just a Python shell. You can, you can do pretty much whatever you could do in Python code here. So set some variables. Um, when you type a variable name, you get the variable back. You know, you can do your math operations or whatever on it, etc. So start some quick handy usage tips with IPython that some of which took me a long time to figure out and I wish someone had told me previously. So one of the handiest things it can do is uh, tab completion. So in this case, let's do from IPython. So I just typed IPY tab. It's inspecting, it takes a bit the first time, but it's inspecting all the modules that are currently active for this particular Python interpreter, um, finding the one that's there and auto-completing it. So import, oops, it'll even uh, auto-complete some Python syntax keywords in the right places. So in this case, I typed IM and hit tab and it filled in import for me. Um, and the function we're gonna be talking about in this video is IPython's embed function. Um, so rather than just typing embed, I'm gonna hit tab here. And again, it might take a second while it enumerates all of them, but this is literally everything I can import from IPython itself. I can use the arrow keys to flip around through these um, and hit enter on whichever one you want and it will bring it up. Or you can start typing one. So since I'm, I know the function I want is called embed, type my EM, there you go. There's two functions inside IPython that start with embed. I'm fine with the first one, so I'll just hit enter. Okay, so now we have embed there. Now, handy useful tip number one, appending a question mark onto anything in IPython pulls up the doc string for it. So embed question mark like this, shows us the Python doc string for, and it's pulling this directly from the embed source code. So it works with almost any Python code that's got, that uses doc strings, which is most of the standard library and most good quality modules that you'll install from, uh, from PyPy or wherever as well. So anyways, that's some documentation about what embed does. It goes, it gets even better though. If you put two question marks after it, it'll show you a chunk of the source code in a scrollable view from there. So this can be handy to figure out what kind of parameters the function takes to get a better idea of where it is, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the way you may wonder internally how that tab completion works. So actually all it's doing is calling another little known or less known than it should be function in Python, which is the dir function. So this is a Python built-in. It's pretty much always available. If you call it on objects that support it, it'll list out all the things you could call. So embed is not actually a great example because embed is a function. Um, but let's take something like a string. So, so this is going to list, it's creating a string object implicitly here, and it's going to list all the methods that are available on the string object. So you'll see some familiar things like lower and upper and et cetera, all the usual methods that Python provides for you. Anyways, so dir is not, a, not actually an IPython specific thing, although it is often useful inside IPython. Moving on. Another handy thing that IPython lets you do is uh, after you run something in the console, the result of whatever you run gets saved into a special variable, which you can then access. So say I do 2 plus 2, or well, okay, apparently 23 plus 2, that's fine too. Okay, so out is 25, great. Um, the problem is maybe this was something a little more intricate. Maybe I did, okay, let's import pathlib. From pathlib, import path. Okay, so let's say let's say I was looking at some directory, so the current directory. Great, so I got this object and I wanted to do something with it, and I did I don't know I invented some path like uh, path dot slash x slash y. Oh, that doesn't work because x yeah. So uh, let's make them strings slash x slash y. Cool, so POSIX path does this thing and it evaluates that out. Now maybe I'd meant to save that object. Um, it's actually available in underscore. So underscore there is the last value set. So I could do something like x equals underscore. Um, and now my x is set to that same POSIX path underscore. 
uh, double underscore, I forgot how far back you can go, but I believe, yes, triple underscore goes three items back, double underscore goes two items back, which in this case is now three because we moved forward a line, and double score, and single underscore is the last one, which will again be three because it's the last item executed from our current line. You can also type history at any point, and that'll list you everything you've typed out so far. So if you forgot a command you typed, you can you can just do this and go back and get it fairly easily. Another nice thing um, IPython does is if you start typing something you typed before, so say I've used path already here and hit the up arrow, it'll fill it in with the last one. And if you keep hitting up, it'll find it'll keep going before that. So right now it's searching through everything I've done that started with path. So with these together, IPython can be pretty darn handy. There is a lot more though. One thing that I often find myself doing is uh, I code stuff in one window on the left and then I have an IPython shell open on the right here and I move back and forth between them. Uh, this is really handy for example for writing functions. So say say I was making some function called test func um, and I was iterating on it and I wanted to see if it did what it was supposed to do. So for now I'll just make it return to. Okay great so that's not particularly useful. Where things get interesting is with something called IPython magics. IPython has a bunch of special commands that are IPython specific. For example, you can hold down, you can hit the percentage sign and hit tab and you'll be able to see a whole bunch of them. So all these ones that starts with percent over here, these are not normal Python stuff. These are magical IPython things that IPython can do for you. You can check their docs. There's tons of them. They have all sorts of different functions, some more useful than others. Um, the one I'm interested in is cpaste. So what cpaste lets you do, there's two useful ones here. Percent paste will run whatever code you have in the clipboard inside the context of this IPython shell. Now, in my case, because I'm using NeoVim here, I yanked this test function into one of Vim's internal registers, not the clipboard, not the system clipboard. So I could just yank it to the system clipboard and do that, but I prefer to stick with Vim, and then I do, instead of using paste, I do cpaste. So when you do cpaste, you end up in this little box here. So I can now paste that in. There's my test func and indentation there. Um, and I can either, like it says, I can hit two dashes on a line and hit enter, or I can hit control D. So I'm just going to hit control D. And now I have test func is here. So I'll use my question mark I did a minute ago, the double question mark to show the source. And there's my little function. And I can run it if I want. And there we go. And it returns to as I expect. Now maybe I'm coding over here and I say x equals 2 and I decided to turn um, 2 plus x. Okay, cool. Now I want to copy this over and use it in the same function. I can see paste again, overwrite it, control D, and now my test block is going to come back and say 4 with 2 plus x just, just as you would expect. Um, there's plenty of other ways to do it. It's useful in other functions as well. It's just a very handy way to iteratively work on um, code. Okay, so all that said, let's do something a little more interesting. I think one of the most unknown things that, about IPython is it's there's, it comes with a function called embed. So I mentioned that earlier, but if I do from IPython import embed, let's I'm going to hit Control L to bring the screen back up so it's clear, and then I'm going to use the question mark on the function we just imported to take a look at the docs for it. So call this to embed IPython at the current point in your program. I think this is super underused and super handy. When you use this, you can basically start an IPython shell and use it like a debugger. So let's go down here. So this is a very simple toy program I was using just to do this. Let's, let's first import it into the source code here. I like to import it as, a, as an alias. Oops, from IPython import embed as IPython. It's just easier to remember, so this way I'm just calling the embed function, but I call it by the name IPython when I'm typing in my code. And now I will call it down here. Okay, so we start that we set x to zero, we start this infinite loop, and then we call this IPython embed thing. So I'm actually going to exit out of this IPython session I've been playing with here, get back down to a normal um, shell prompt, Okay, so here we are at a normal shell prompt. And this script that I'm working on is called rpdb-testing. So I'm just going to run it, rpdb-testing. And what's going to happen is it's going to start. 
And then we end up in another IPython shell again. So I'm going to run it before we show the value for x, after we show the daytime value, instead of um, just at the beginning like I did a second ago. So let me run that one more time. OK, and you see, up here it prints out um, it prints out the current time and date. And then execution pauses, and we, bring, we get a complete IPython shell, just like the one we were using a minute ago, only the variables that are in context at this point are all here. So for example, my x shows 0. My date time is in scope and imported. Same with time, et cetera, et cetera. And all the goodies from a minute ago like uh, work just the way you'd expect. You can use the question mark to get the docs for anything you're working on as you're working on it. And you can get all your tab of completion and your underscore works to get the stuff that was returned previously. So even better, I can actually set variables. So x equals, right? I'm going to hit Control D to exit out of IPython and hit yes. And now my original line of code over here executed with the new updated value of x. x is from IPython. And that'll stick around as long as I want to run it. So this is super handy for debugging, exploring, and troubleshooting things. If your code is not doing what you expect it to, I strongly, strongly recommend you drop one of these in there and explore. It's, it's saved me so much time. Um, in situations like this where I'm stuck in an infinite loop, I usually use Control Z to get out because that'll suspend whatever shell you're at. Back on, this is bash now, not, not Python related, but it's handy when using IPython this way. You can type jobs to list the actively running jobs. So Control Z suspended that one job there. And I can kill that by typing kill percent one, which tells Bash to kill my job number one. So there we go. That's that's an easy way out rather than control seeing, which which can uh, be a little unreliable when you're in these kinds of looping fast settings. So all that's really handy, but let's add some code here. Okay. So now in our F string, we're calling this test func thing, and we're running it again. The only thing that sucks about IPython as a debugger is that you're stuck at the place you put it in your code. So if you want, if you change your mind while you're running it or realize that you didn't stop, put it at the exact right place, you have to restart your whole program, which if you're doing something big and complicated, could, could be a pain. Maybe you want to stay longer in the current session you're in. So that's where I use another one. So IPDB is a similar IPython-based debugging tool, which is... Pretty good on its own, but it doesn't give you a full IPython session. However, you can use them together. So if you don't have IPDB, just do a pip install IPDB. Um, and from here, to use IPDB, the most the most commonly used function is one called set trace. So from IPDB, import set trace. And again, I like to do these aliases because it's easier for me to remember. All right, so there we go. Now I'll call IPDB at this point, and we're going to stop at an IPDB shell this time instead of an IPython shell. So IPython, IPDB is a little different. It does some handy features like, like this here, where it shows you what line of code it stopped at and where things are going. At any point in an IDB session, you can type where, or just W for short, and that'll print out that same input there. And you can hit C, short for continue, to continue running. So we just iterated through the loop one time. So x equals 0, our test func result is 4 as we expected. So that's all well and good. I, IPDB has some of its own autocomplete. Um, it's pretty good on its own as a debugger. It just doesn't give you, you can't do all the question mark magic and some of the cool stuff that real IPython can let you do. However, from IPDB itself, from an IPDB shell, you can actually call IPython's, oops, we read it, we added to this, IPython's embed method and end up with IPython here. Now, why would you want to use this together? Well, IPDB has one function that IPython does not, and that's that it lets you set breakpoints at other points in your code. So say, for example, we realized after we started this that the problem was not actually in the loop there. It was somewhere inside test func, and we wanted to stop inside test func. Well, test func, as, you'll, as you can see from the left there, is on line 9. So what you do is do B for breakpoint 9, and IPDB sets a breakpoint at line 9. So what happened now is if I hit C again, it's going to continue until it gets to line 9. So here you are. You can see the stack trace there. Again, where we'll show you that at any point. And now we can see we're stopped inside test func, and we can see the value of x. Um, we could even change the value of x to something else. Or better yet, 
we could run IPython and maybe change the value of x to something very, do a bunch of importing or other work and change the value to something complicated from my Python. Okay, so now I'll exit out of IPython. That brings me back to PDB. And I'll hit continue in PDB again. And we're continue, gonna continue our loop. But this time the result of test functions x's value has changed. Ah, well, yes, okay, there is that. They correctly got me that uh, you can't concatenate an int in a string. However, just by the very fact that it was concatenating an int in a string, you can see that it was using the new updated value of x that we set from inside IPD, from inside IPython, running inside IPDB, which is set a breakpoint inside test func. So together, these are these are pretty powerful. This is a toy example, obviously, but if you're doing complicated, nasty stuff, this can be very, very handy. Uh, anyways, that's all for today. Hope this was helpful. Talk to you next time.